Hello everyone, my name is Korazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. As you can see, we are in front of our ever-expanding and ever-more-detailed house, and I actually just finished chiseling out this window and this overhang this morning. Today, as I threatened, we are going to continue our discussion on automation. Last episode we did the quern, this episode we are going to do something else. But first, there are a couple things that I need to take care of. I realize I have been remiss because every good house needs a sign, right? And one of you, and pardon me, I don't remember who it was, but one of you has given me my first appellation, and I thought it would be good to grace our doorframe with a sign telling everyone whose house this is. That's right. I am the master of plaster. It's somewhere in the comments, <laughs> buried somewhere, but that is me, the master of plaster. And the other thing I wanted to take care of is that as of this episode, we have updated to 1.16.5, which is a very minor update. It was primarily a bug fix update. In particular, it focuses on some of the derpiness of fruit trees, which may mean that we might be able to harvest them next year and bring some branches back to plant here as potential saplings. Now granted, they don't all survive, so there is that risk. But that means that we may be able to get that going on and actually get some fruit trees in here. That does unfortunately mean that they will actually produce less fruit because one of the bugs was that they continue fruiting repeatedly during their fruiting stage. The other bug that was fixed are ladders. Well, is related to ladders. I don't know if you've noticed, but whenever I take down ladders, I have to take them down two at a time. And that was a bug introduced, I think, in 1.16.0, because they worked fine before then. But what should be happening is this. Down they come. So that bug's been fixed, which is great, because now it makes taking ladders down a lot faster. I don't have to sit there and fiddle with it. So, on to today's topic. Automation, and specifically, with the Helve Hammer. However, I did learn my lesson from the last episode, which took about six hours to record and another eight or so to edit into the final video. It was so long that I ended up burning through all of my buffer videos that I record ahead of time. That was a bit of a special case, though. We needed the tower to house the windmill, but we also needed the windmill to make the materials for the tower. This time, the help hammer isn't required for our building, except to hammer out plates for its lanterns in the long run. So this project is going to be done in two parts. Today we build the building. Next episode, we will design, build, and use our new help hammer setup. I want to build a big fancy blacksmith, and I'm thinking right over here is the place to do it. I want to put it pretty close to our existing windmill because we're going to hook into this powertrain to run the help hammer, or help hammers. You'll see later. And once I get this flattened out, we will talk about exactly what I want to do in regard to this forge here. I will see you on the other side. And there we go. The dirt is all flattened out. And I'll fill in some of this stuff as we go once I figure out where that's going to sit exactly. But I wanted to note that I haven't taken this down yet. And that's because today's build is going to involve some limestone rock. And because I want a lot of it, and because I'm probably going to chisel most of it, I'm actually just going to do a little trick that can be a little cheaty in other situations, but I think here, since we'll be using this, I feel a little better about it, is we don't have to relieve this rock. We can just tap it with the chisel, and now, when we pick them up, we will get the chiseled block every time. So this is a great way of gathering building materials, as long as you don't want to turn them into bricks or polished versions of the stone, and so on. If you're planning on using just the block itself, and or you want to chisel it, it's a good way of getting that resource. So I'm going to do that to the limestone in here, and then I'll just sort of rip out the granite, and we'll call this area done. And there we have it. Here is our newly flattened out building area. So like I said, I wanted to put this over here near the windmill. I don't want to put it too close. So I'm thinking maybe six or eight blocks away over here somewhere. And I don't want it to be quite in line with the road. I want it to be set back. So it actually might line it up with the tower, and that might do it. Because this is a blacksmith shop. You don't want to have your esteemed guests come up here, and the first thing they see staring them in the face right here is the 
blacksmith. Now you want it to be set back just a little out of the way, just so they know you're not some kind of poor tradesman, right? Right? Yeah, right. So with a bit of dirt, I think I'm going to start just... I'll pick a corner. I'll pick this corner here. And we'll put one, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's go two more. And maybe even set back one more. How's that look? Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So let's come out a little ways. I want to incorporate some elements of our house here and our current barn without making it too similar to either. I want it to be clear that the same builder, me, made the building, but I don't want to, you know, make the same building over and over again with the same design and materials. So I want to use the design from this one to an extent and some of the similar looking materials to this one as well as a new bit of flair. So I know what the interior wants to look like because the health hammers kind of dictate how large an area we need at a minimum to operate. So I've already sort of mapped that out. So I'm going to come out here and we're going to do an 18 block by 18 block exterior wall. 2, 3, 4, 18. And we're going to come back 18. 2, 3, 4, 18. And then all the way across. Just like that. And I was thinking it would be really cool to have a forge right in the middle of the building and have the chimney come out in the center. So I'm going to mark that out. So we're going to have a sort of forge area just like this. I don't want this to be just a square compound. I think I want to make an L-shaped building. And then this area out here will have a fenced-in area where we can put things like the bloomeries and maybe ingots for cooling. Oh, that might go inside instead. But that'll sort of give it a little bit of flair, something new, keep it from being too boxy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just sort of map out where things are going to go, and then we'll talk about materials. Okay, so I think I have the design of the shape done. So what I have here is these will be our interior walls, the medium fertility soil, and then the low fertility soil denotes where I want to have the supports. And so as you can see, we have an L-shaped building. We will have the forge area, or the smelting area, right here, the smeltery. I've marked the center of each sort of 7x7 seven seven area internally with these two block tall pillars. That's just so I can sort of keep my bearings on what I'm doing here. They'll come down, and in fact right here is where we'll have the anvil for our help hammer setup, surrounded by, eventually, four help hammers. I want to have doors that are not symmetrical, so I have them offset. I have one coming in here, and one coming in over here. And this will sort of be, I think, our storage area. Or we might do this as our personal smithing area and have our storage area over here. Maybe have some space for cooling ingots along the walls here. Okay, so I dropped some torches to give a better view of what's going on here. But from our little perch here, here is the final outline for the base of the build. And I have over here a little column noting where the corner of the fence will be for the outside area. So let's talk materials. We recently snagged some sandstone rock, which I want to turn into the polished version because typically polishing a rock turns it into a much more vibrant color. So I'll do a couple of these and I'll show you the difference here. So the polished sandstone just gets this really nice bright orange look to it. And I really think that would work well as an accent in our blacksmith build. So I want to use this. So we're going to have some sandstone along the bottom. And then I was thinking we would use the limestone as kind of a plaster replacement. Because look at this, we have the sort of dirtier, yellowier color of the limestone I think would fit the blacksmith better because we're going to have, you know, burning coal over here. There will be soot everywhere. There will be sparks flying. This building isn't going to be as clean as the main house. So I think using this limestone will be a nice touch. And it'll still bring over the same kind of white color of the house without matching it too exactly. So we're going to have a sort of white colored wall 
and we'll have windows that reflect this design over here. I'm not going to use trapdoors this time. I'm going to actually chisel in some slab. Oh, duh, that was our <laughs> our lamb just scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> Whoops. So I'm not going to use the trapdoors. I'm going to chisel some custom slats out of oak. So I'm going to go and place a, an oak slab over here. I won't chisel it here, but I want to get the color in so we see what we're going to work with. So here we have our oak slab. There we are. The supports on the house, which will be here, will be oak wood. One, because it's plentiful. Two, because it sort of just matches the area. And three, it's also pulling a material from that build over there. And then lastly, I'm going to have some amount of granite stone brick in here. And I'm probably going to do a similar design as the barn over here, where we have the walls be actually sort of slabbed walls like this, and then have the brick peeking through here in place of the cobblestone. And I might just change this up by recessing this upward one more block, or by moving this upward one more block, just to make it different enough of a design that doesn't look too exact, just that you know the same builder was the one making it. And then for the roof. The roof, I unfortunately don't have the exact block we're going to use, and this is kind of a poor substitute. Why am I using dirt? Give me ladders. But we're going to be using some fire clay shingles for the roof. Now, the fire clay shingles are a good bit darker than this. In fact, I'll bring it up in the handbook. So here we have the slanted fire clay roofing. As you can see, it's not quite as bright and pink as the fire clay bricks. It's kind of got this pinkish, orangish, greenish hue to it, and it's kind of mottled, you know, because you got mildew and mold growing on your roof. So I think that will go really well on top of the rest of this build. And between the sandstone and the fire clay shingles, I think we'll have a unique of enough look that it will stand out while still fitting in. So that, of course, means that it is time to get our resource gathering on. It is time to go and pick up all the stuff and go and find and acquire all these materials. Let's get to it. I don't think these are supposed to do that. Well, I don't quite believe it, but we have found another traitor here. And I didn't see this one on the map at all. Even though it was staring me in the face the whole time. Here goes nothing. Uh, well, not my favorite. But we can sell you some stuff, so... Okay, it's something new, I guess. It's something new. Well, we seem to have busted into a cave while checking out a sandstone deposit. Let's see what's here. Any ghosties hiding? We don't have many torches, so we'll have to be a little conservative with them. I hear many friends. Hello, friends. Why oh, you want to share your rocks with us? Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I love rock collections. Let me share my arrows with you in return. Do you like my arrow collection? But you want to see it again? There you go. I'm happy to share these with you. Ooh. -oh. I spy some locusts over there. I think today is... Oop, they see me. 
I'm not sure today's the day for locust nests, though. Guess it is. You know what? Since we are here, so lamb looks like. Let's do it. Why not? Hello. Silly lamb. Tricks are for kids. Let's break these guys down. So they cause less trouble. Goodbye. Why are we not hitting you? Oh, thank you. Oh, come on. We're just gonna do this. Yeah, we're fine. Oh my. Close combat archery. That's me. Did we get the cage at least? Yes, we did. Okay. Whew. Well, that was fun. Well, this is a cave to explore. And a half. Oh, that goes super deep. But look how stable it is here. This is... Oh. Spikes. Great. This is a place to explore later. Let's go do some inventory management. And then we'll get back on track of building. Okay, and while the snow falls and covers everything in white, let's start getting this building in. We'll start with the sandstone rock, and then we'll move to the limestone regular walls, and I'll get that filled in along with some of these supports, at least the start of them, if not the whole way up. And then we'll start working on some of the details, like the doors and windows. Let's get to it.
this build is certainly starting to shape up. I guess we can take down our sample now. Much better. So now we can see the corner of the forge's chimney sticking out here a little bit. And I shifted the chimney one block this way and one block that way to make it stick out an extra block because it was just going to be a single sort of column of blocks in the corner and it looked kind of funny. It looked sort of weak, I think. So I think it looks better this way. Inside we have our wonderful light system. And this will be the forge proper. We'll have up to four different fires going here. And I will have to put something at the top to make sure we don't get snow and rain in and dousing our fires. But here we have sort of the, the vent hood, making sure that the environmentally friendly coal fumes and exhaust doesn't uh, permeate the room here. We're going to have a lot of ventilation in here because, again, this is a forge. It'll be hot in here, and it'll be stinky. So you want to get all that smoke and hot air out. So here, along the walls, we'll have a lot of windows. And then... I think what we'll do is the roof will have sort of right in there I want to have some like fences to sort of give additional ventilation. Not that we actually need it in game because temperature from a forge isn't really a thing, but I wanted to have it because it's, you know, neat and interesting and fits the theme of the build. Now for these chiseled window slats, I'm actually going to be using the full size wood plank blocks because I want to have the slats be vertical, and it would look kind of funny, for instance here, if I had vertical slats made out of boards that went laterally. It just wouldn't make sense, they'd fall apart. So I'm using the vertical orientation, which you can't get from the slabs. But this will do nicely. And from here, I want to do chiseling on this wall, just like on the barn where we have the actual interior wall set in by one half of a block. So from here, it's going to be a lot of just chiseling out, pretty rough chiseling at maximum size, and then we'll come back in with some of the details. So I'm going to get to work on that. Now, for the outer wall bits that are going to show, meaning the arches, I'm going to be using some granite stone brick slabs, and we'll just make an arch similar to the arch on the barn, but I am going to raise it up half a block, just to make it look different, and because I think it fits this build a little better. So, let's get to that. I will see you on the other side of this one. This is going to be a bit of a bear. And there we have the granite stone brick finished on the blacksmith here. And it is looking mighty fine. And now onto our windows. And these, because they are going to be a single repeatable block, I'm going to just chisel one of them. And then I will copy them over in our workbench because it'll save a lot of time. So I'm going to go do that. So what we're doing with these slats here is I'm just going to chisel in a slight frame and then starting from the center I'm going to have two block wide gaps followed by one block wide slats and there goes my chisel Brick for real this time. And there we have our window lattice, so we can see what they're at is. <laughs> anyway, I kept this extra little lip here that I made by accident while I realized I could speed up some of this work by hitting this area with the 2x2. Two two. And I think I kind of like it, so I added it back in partway through. And this is what these look like. Now, I need to go and do the inside part, just sort of the, the first bezel piece. And then we will go inside and copy this. Oh boy, do I feel like a dummy. 
So apparently you can't copy the blocks because it's looking for a special vertical version of the oak planks that don't exist as an inventory block. Because when you place down oak planks in the vertical orientation and then you break them again, you get the regular block back with the vertical, or sorry, the horizontal orientation. However, this mod is looking for a vertical version of these oak planks, and we can't do that. So, I'll tell you what, for now, we'll just put these back where they belong, and we will chisel them as time permits. Which is not today. Okay, so let's get back to work on the rest of the main build, and get this finished out. And I do think our fire clay shingles should be done. And I see no more fire over here, so yes, they are. Let's go grab those, and we'll get started on the roof if we don't get trapped here with the snow. So for the roof this time, rather than having a standard house with a gable on the end, I think what I want to do is I want to have sort of a, I don't know what the word's called, but a Pizza Hut style roof where the roof slopes in every direction from the center line. Now we have an L-shaped center line, so that should be interesting. Uh, but we do have the option of making some of the fancier stranger, not those, stranger shapes out of these shingles to accommodate the corners here. Well, it seems I have once again underestimated just how many roof tiles we need. So I'm going to get in out of the cold because I'm starting to shiver, and I'm going to make us some more clay roof tiles. So while those shingles are firing, let's go inside and let's talk about what we're going to do with the floor. Because I just can't imagine leaving any room with a floor unfinished. So what I'm thinking here is I want to have just a little sort of capstone piece or centerpiece of each floor, of each section of the floor. And what we'll do is we will put a piece of polished slate in each of these center sections. So this is the center of a 7x7 seven seven work area here. And then we've got like a little buffer zone here and then a 7x7 seven seven here. So then let's go ahead and we'll clear out the dirt from here and take it from there. I didn't even count. It was exact. It's a sign! Hmm. No, that gets kind of lost. It's too similar to the chimney. Out you come. And there we have our floor. I think I like it. This is just a nice touch darker than the walls, but they still carry the same color, so it fits the area. And I think what we can do is, when we come in here for a detail pass, in the areas where we have things like the forge, or the anvils, or any other place where there's fire involved, we can come in here and we can chisel some dark spots as if the floor has been scorched by pieces of slag and metal that spray off from the anvils or pop out of the forge. The forge that doesn't have any snow in it now. Ahem, hem. So we are close to the end here. We're getting kind of low on shingles, but 
Oh, I'm shivering again. But I had another thought, and that is this roof is awfully plain, and it's going to run the risk of just kind of being really boring if I leave it like this, even with a fancy top on. Now, the chimney will help break that up a little bit, but I also think I want to pull some inspiration from the barn and put some little dormers just down here, sort of where the vents are, uh, just under the roof line, just to sort of add more ventilation and to have a little thing popping out here, which will help break up the roof line and make it look a little less boring. So what we're going to do with these guys is we drop this guy here, kind of plop this one here, and then we're going to temporarily stick a dirt block, say, there, and take out the dirt block. Yes, that helps the roof line a lot better. That way it's just not this sort of flat expanse of roof. So let's get these done all the way across here, and then we'll finish out the top of the roof, and get the rest of the chimney in, and see where we go from there. And it looks like we made a few too many of the regular shingles, which is a shame because we are so close to finishing this. So let's get inside, and we are going to warm up and make a few more shingles and finish the job up. But so far, I think this is looking pretty fine. Yes, indeed. As we shiver and shudder from the cold. Now, since we are still waiting another probably 18 hours for those shingles to cook, let's talk about how we're going to get the rotational power in here. So we have a shaft coming down from the windmill up there, it's going down into that chamber there. My plan is I want to dig out the basement under here a bit more, and we'll run a line directly over into this chamber here. And actually, is that lined up perfectly? Oh, I think it is. Wow. Well, it won't be for long. That's fine. Anyway, so we need to dig out a little basement, and it's not going to cover this entire blacksmith shop. We're just going to do the 7x7 area underneath where our health hammers are going, and that is right here. So I want to make a little basement staircase, probably here, just along the wall. Actually, now that I think about it, because the health hammers are a sort of four block long machine, we have the health base, the health toggle, a blank space, and the anvil, a staircase here might not actually work. And I don't want to put it here, and I don't want to sort of clutter up any of these other sections with the staircase. So what I might do instead is we'll just put a ladder in this corner. It'll be out of the way. I'll have to sort of maneuver between the help hammers to get to it, which is fine, because this is going to be all about the help hammers anyway. So I'm just going to mark this out, just so I don't build anything here. Oop, well, let's, let's get rid of this now, can't we? So let's go ahead and we'll dig this out. And I'm thinking we'll make a five block tall basement because there are some mechanics we're going to want to fit under here. And we want to make sure we have room for that. And then we'll just dig this basement out. I will see you all on the other side. Okay, now that we have this basement, whoops. I don't want to get caught in another loop of having to break and replace torches every day. And I don't want to have to waste a lantern down here. So we have another option for keeping drifters out of our hair. Is that similar to the other block game, if we take slabs, we can, to use the parlance of that other block game, we can slab an entire area, and because drifters need a full solid block to spawn on, they cannot spawn down here once we have this completely covered. So we can leave it dark down here and not have to worry much about drifter incursions. So then, we want to dig a new tunnel, and I'm thinking we'll just put it... I'll go line it up with the other shaft over there, but we're going to dig a tunnel that goes straight through, and we'll slab the tunnel too, and we'll have it be two blocks tall, or actually three blocks tall, but the third block will be taken up by axles. Okay, and now we have our, our maintenance hallway between the blacksmith and the tower where our wind power comes in. And we're not going to talk about how long this took because I'm pretty sure our fire clay shingles are more than ready for us. So let's go get those, shall we? 
And with this, we put the last touches on our roof. And that looks a little bit derpy, but I think it's a little bit better than having one of these be the dominant ridge line. So we'll leave it as it is. And we'll hope that Tyron comes up with a better block at some point. We'll see. Well, I'm going to do some cleanup inside. There's some dirt blocks I want to get rid of. And then I'm going to get the outside fence in, and we'll take a look at the build. And there she is. I am liking how our blacksmith turned out. There are, of course, still a few details. We need to finish out these slats that are supposed to be here. We only have the one in right over here. But that will come in time as I get downtime between episodes. I did go ahead and I filled in these corners so that they didn't have this sort of ugly, just gross underside of roof block texture going on. And I put a little bit of trim around here that I think helps sort of tie this together a little bit. I also did a maple fence. Maple fence were outdoors and looks nice and green and mildewy. With a couple of gates, just in case I have drifters coming and I need to, you know, leave by one gate because they're all gathered at the other. And I put a little path here. It's not hugely important, but I like having the path here just as a visual indicator of, you know, where we walk. We blacksmiths. Inside, we have our limestone and sandstone walls and floor with the polished slate center pieces. We have our forge and chimney here, and we have our rafters overhead. And maybe I could put some more roof supports to make it look a little bit more complete in here at some point. That will come later as well. And lastly, we also have our tunnel from under here over to our tower. And that is that. That was a pretty big building episode. I hope you enjoyed our adventure in gathering the materials and putting together a blacksmith. Now, since it is Infrastructure Week, next episode we are going to be populating our blacksmith with the tools and machinery that we need to begin mass production of ingots and plates. Anyway, that is about it for this episode. Let me know what you think of the blacksmith in the comments. And next time, look forward to checking out the Helvhammer. As always, my name has been Kurzar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.